In a survey funded by the United, University of Washington School of Medicine, 1,080 of 1,800 adult Seattle residents said they did not believe they could come down with a sexually transmitted infection, STI. Constructed 90% confidence interval estimating the, the proportion of adult Seattle residents that do not believe they can contract an STI. Um, that was kind of a morbid, morbid or depressing subject, but okay. Preliminary, we have to do some checks before we can run a, a, a confidence interval. And the first one is making sure that our sample size here, which is um, <clears throat> 1800 is less than 5% of the population. So I, go I Googled um, the population of Seattle. I don't know what it is exactly today, but in 2020, according, according to Google, it says it was 741,251. So if we um, take 5% of that we, by multiplying by 0 0.05, then <clears throat> we just have to make sure that our, um, that our sample size is smaller than 5% of that number. So um, let's do 741251. We don't have to do exactly, but you know, just around that number. 741251 times by, you know, if I want to take 5% of that, I multiply by 0 0.05. And that is um, 37,000, um, <clears throat> which is definitely, you know, definitely our sample size, which is the <clears throat> 1800, is definitely smaller than 37,000. So it is safe to say that, that um, our sample size is less than 5% of the population. So <clears throat> They said of the, this amount um, surveyed, um, so 1800 is our N, and that's less than 0 0.05 of all residents, which was 74,152. What was it? Something is 251, I think it was 251. <clears throat> And so actually 5% of the population was 37,062. And that is greater than the sample size 1800. So the sample size is less than 5% of the entire population. So yes, um, it is assumed to say, is safe to say that. Normally you, they may not give you a number. Um, so, for this always, usually I just say yes, because um, for this, per, usually these requirements pretty much have to be met in order to run this test. So um, if they don't give you information about the city or, or, or I just assume it's probably yes for part A, but um, <clears throat> in a real life, you would want to double check that for sure. All right. Um, <clears throat> Verify that n times p hat times one minus p hat is greater than or equal to ten. So remember the p hat here is our <clears throat> sample proportion. It means the number of people that have the characteristic of interest over the total number of people sampled. That is what the p hat is. So the, our interest is people who do not believe they can contract an STI, and they said. So that's the number of people in our sample that don't believe they can catch an STI is the X. So let's read it again. In a survey funded by the University of, of Washington School of Medicine, 1,080 of the 1,800 1, adults said they did not believe in coming down, they could come down with this STI. So it's the 1,080 that is our X value. It is the number of people in the survey that had our particular characteristic of interest. And then N is the total number of people sampled. So they said 1,080 of the total 1,800 sampled. So 1,800 is our N. So P hat is 
1080 divided by 1800 is 0.6. So good thing that it's just a short decimal there, 0.6. If it wasn't, I probably would have kept that this accurate I, um, to all of its decimal places, um, just because I don't want to make um, this. Some of these homework problems are super like picky. Like if you were to truncate this out to four decimals, it would it, maybe it required you to have it accurate to seven decimals or so. When you go down to do this calculation, so I would try your best to keep all decimals in your calculator. You're doing these calculations, but if you want to do n times this p hat, so the p hat is 0. 0.6, and the n we said was 1800, so it's 1800 times 0. 0.6 times 1 minus 0. 0.6. And we're seeing and checking does that in fact equal a number that's greater than or equal to 10? So let's calculate what that is. It is 1800 times by 0.6 times a, I put in parentheses, 1 minus 0.6, and we get this 432, which is greater than or equal to 10. So we do know the first two things are verified. And let's just make sure that that's the same answer they got, 432, that's right. Okay. So we just move right along. We know we now have met the preliminary requirements that we can run it at this um, confidence interval. We can create this confidence interval. So let's go ahead and do that. It says, um, what is what is the 90% confidence interval to estimate the population proportion round to three decimal places? <clears throat> so I go to calculate on my calculator, second, Var, vars, um, I'm sorry, sorry, stats. We go to stats and we go to tests and we go to one prop Z interval. So this is a one, prop, one proportion Z confidence interval. Oh, and apparently this is not available on my calculator. So, um, let me use my TI-84, sorry about that. But what I'm gonna, gonna enter, um, let me find, um, hold on a second. Oh, let's do this like cal class calculator then. It's similar on the, um, I just put, class calculator um, and then um, you just click on explore calculator, I believe, and then it will just bring the calculator up. It's a free calculator online calculator to use. I don't even think I had to log in or anything, but um, <clears throat> anyway, so I can go to stats here. I can go to tests and I can do a one prop Z test. And it's very similar to what you're gonna do on the TI-84 calculator. This looks a little different, but it there you're basically going to put in and it, this I love this code because it tells you um oh wait I'm sorry I did, I did the wrong one not one prop z test it's a one prop z interval there are one prop one prop z interval that's what we want oh gosh okay and you notice right away if you get the wrong one because you, then you're not familiar with the things that you need to plug in so X is the number of positive outcomes. That means the number of people in your sample that had a particular outcome that you have characteristic of interest, right? And these are people that believe they couldn't get an STI. So that is our eight, that is our 1,080. And then um, the number in our sample was 1,800. And the confidence level was 90% which is the we're going to want you to write as a decimal, right? There we go. <clears throat> so there's our confidence interval, the lower bound being 0 0.5810, and then the upper bound being 0 0.6189. So let's just double check that that's the answers that they like. 
0.5, oh, to three decimal places, so 0.581, that's correct. And the other side, 0 0.689, that's correct as well. 0 0.619, sorry, that's correct as well. So that is in fact what they want here. Um, <clears throat> and this means, you know, that we are 90% confident that the, <clears throat> Proportion of people who believe they cannot catch an STI is between 58.1% or pretty much 58%, you know, and 61%, right? If I turn these percentages, it's 58% and 61%. So we're 90% we're confident the true proportion of people who are, um, who don't believe they can get an STI is, STI is 58, between 58% and 61%. That's a lot of people. All right, and that's a dark, morbid, I'm sure that's made up problem, but whatever, okay. All right, have a great day, bye.